This is the value of wrestling, the revolutionary force in wrestling podcasting. Get on the phone. Let's let the world know I am back. I think I've done a video every day this week for WrestleMania week. It's been fun. It's been writing the stories and the ventures, everything that is coming out on the big time. This is another big time ranch live right here on the Value Wrestling live right here on YouTube. Well, I guess it's not live for you because it's a pre-recorded show, but I'm here and we're going to get it done. And the craziness just won't end. Anti AEW, CM Punk, CM Punk's anti AEW. Oh. And never end the talking with CM Punk. He comes out, makes a statement, and everybody still seems to be just tra going. You know, the whole system seems to be upset and upturned upside down over CM Punk. And and CM Punk should have not have this much effect on the AEW. Um, uh, the roster, the, the the it should have this much effect. Not even on Tony Khan or anybody else. I mean, it's provenly not doing them any good. As AEW's Dynamite uh, average viewership was at seven hundred fifty-two thousand, with it starting at nine hundred thirty-three thousand the first quarter hour, and in that quarter hour where Adam Copeland was out there giving his raw raw speech, it dropped to seven hundred and sixty-one thousand in the next quarter hour. I mean, that's a massive drop in a first quarter hour where people were just not in tune to what was going on. And this goes back that CM Punk came out, and if you're a fan for Punk, cool. If you're not a fan of Punk, cool. If you think Punk's the devil, then I guess he's done his job. But at the end of the day, CM Punk went on a, a, a interview and was asked questions by an interviewer. He was, he was asked direct questions. He answered the direct questions. He didn't spew this ungodly amount of hate towards AEW. His opinion of AEW and how he experienced AEW, much as like Cody said, that was his experience. Everybody has a right to their opinion. Everybody has a right to how they feel about a given situation. And CM Punk came out and discussed how he felt the situation went down for him, how he felt about it. He feels that AEW is not a business here to make money, that it's about five-star matches and the kicker to that is Tony Khan, time and time again, proves that to be fact. Period. You look, I mean, if you look at the ratings, not good. And you, you can, we can debate, oh, the ratings are not the way they used to be. The ratings are not important. But you can see the huge drop in viewership in the opening of Dynamite this week. Huge drop. Which makes a statement. And they even drop further later in the show. Secondly, look at the live attendance. Who's coming out to the arena and buying tickets? It is not there. This is a brand. This is a company. This is a, a product that caters around a niche audience that likes five-star matches. Who wants to see the best wrestling matches? And there's nothing wrong with seeing the best wrestling matches. But Tony Khan himself has come out and docked, docked uh, WCW for what they did. Is They had good talent, but the major issue was, um, you know... The demise of WCW for them there. Uh, one of the major issues was uh, they had a very large roster. And they had a lot of people on it making lots of money. And what has Tony Khan got? A very large roster with lots of people making big money. And then they recently fired a handful of people. Ten people in total. Uh, the Tate Boys, who I guess were waiting to see their response because Tony Khan said they no-showed a couple of our Ring of Honor shows and they're coming back saying, ah, not the truth. So we're going to have to find out what that's about. And then we know Anthony uh, Anthony Henry was fired because, and he was injured. And then Tony Khan backtracked on it, said he's injured. We're going to take care of him. He's still got a job. And once he's healed, he'll be back on Ring of Honor AEW TV. But Tony Khan's whole reason for firing people wasn't about budget cuts. It's about uh, expansion. It's about being able to free up more collateral, more money to go out and get even more people to pay them more money. But Tony Khan says having a big roster with a lot of people paying 
that you're paying big money to. You can't pay $100,000 to everybody on your roster, right, Tony? Your words. Remember that? Let's talk about it. So, Tony Khan is releasing people due to the fact that he needs to free up some money so he can go after some big name targets. Because, you know, Tony just wants to buy every name that's out there thinking that this is what's going to save his company. And this is why he's a mark. He wants to make matches to get the five stars that he gets his, you know, props off from Dave Meltzer going, you did it again, Tony. Yeah, yeah, you got five stars. Good match. Great matches are great, but if there's no storyline, if there's no reason to continue watching, then what's the point? And how long can you continue to put matches together? It is only going to go so long. How many people on that roster can you put Osprey against that are going to have good matches before Osprey's gone through the entire roster? Right? Story doesn't change. Punk wasn't trying to be anti-AEW. He's probably not a big supporter of AEW, but he's not necessarily out here trying to shut down or end AEW as anti-AEW would be referenced. He made his statements about the issue that ha happened with Jack Perry. Let alone, people want to come out and go, oh, it's not Tony Khan's responsibility to do anything with Jack Perry. Tony Khan was busy calling the biggest show of his life. And CM Punk walks over and says, take care of it. And CM, uh, Tony Khan looks at him and goes, what do you want me to do about it? He's doing the biggest broadcast of his life. You can't pause live pay-per-view TV to, to, to satisfy Punk. It's Punk's fault that the whole issue with Jack Perry, because he didn't deal with it appropriately. Tony Khan is the boss of AEW, and this is why CM Punk says he's not a boss, because he said, what do you want me to do about it? Do something. If you're a, if you, you're the boss, if you're the head, if you're the one in charge, and an employee comes to you and addresses a concern, and especially a concern or agreement with another employee or an issue that another employee is creating, it is your responsibility to either A, address the situation, or find somebody who's capable of doing it that you trust, to address the situation immediately. Tony Khan could have looked around and said, I need you to go get Jack Perry, talk to him or get him out of the building and tell him I want to talk to him tomorrow. It falls on Tony, period. Does that grant CM Monk the, uh, the, 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 the right to put hands on Jack Perry? Not necessarily. Doesn't give him the rights in any company in the, in the world to pretty much put his hands on another man due to a grievance. Now, that's very old school wrestling. That's an old school way. And Punk grew up, was raised up through wrestling that way. That's how they dealt with issues. Whether we like it or not, that is a lot of the way in the old school days things got taken care of. Period. But PM, CM Punk dealt what he felt was needed. He gave Tony Khan a, a, a chance. And then Jack Perry came through the curtain and pushed the button. Punk's like, I'm going to deal with it. If somebody would have been between Punk and Perry when Perry was coming back through that curtain, immediately got with Perry and dragged him aside and said, we need to talk and get you out of here or whatever, it may have been a whole different scenario. Not saying Punk is perfectly clean or peachy clean. And even Punk himself admits there was probably some better ways of dealing with some of this stuff. But it happened. It was in the moment. And this is where we are. Punk was targeted by people that had other friends there that were more about their friends than the business. And Punk knew that, and Punk felt that, and Punk was trying to survive and be there, and Tony wanted Punk to be there, and Tony still wants Punk to be there. That's why he's upset that Punk isn't there, and Punk's over on WWE doing all this stuff and rating up WrestleMania, and uh, Tony Khan's still upset about it. It's a period of the truth. Tony Khan shows Jack Perry over CM Punk, and that's how it goes, and you can hate CM Punk, you can disagree with me, and that's fine, but at the end of the day... There wouldn't be an issue. You wouldn't have Adam Copeland going out there doing a raw, raw cheering spell, uh, 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 promo thingy, whatever you want to call it, if Tony didn't care. But Tony does care. And Tony knows that he messed up with Punk. And Tony knows that he didn't hold to accountability the people that needed to be held accountable. And there's a group of people back there that kind of run the show. Well, there's two guys that I think are the biggest ones that are running this show and turning it upside down. Now, I know Cody, and I love Cody, and I know Cody's big supporters of them, and they have a friendship, but it does seem to continuously come back to that one relevant term that everybody says it's all friends wrestling. And the more we go, and the more we find out, and the more that comes out, the more truth that seems to be. And the fact of the matter that Tony Khan refuses to address the situation, confront the situation, or answer any questions, comments, or concerns about it that are brought up to him, and rather take softball questions, just points at the logistic aspect of it all being more and more true. 
just facts. I mean, we can even go to this thing. Somebody put up a video of uh, Kevin Nash calling out HBK on WCW Nitro back in the in uh, uh, the, the the Monday Night Wars back in the NWO days. Uh, Shawn Michaels had made a comment about his friends there. They made a comment back back him, and so people were in an uproar because. The Young Buck shutting out a fellow AEW wrestler is bad, but it was cool for Kevin Nash to talk about HBK on Nitro. The difference is the Young Bucks haven't talked anything about Jack Perry, acknowledge Jack Perry in any sort of way, or the scapegoat until this past Dynamite. All of a sudden, they want to do it. They want to align themselves with Jack Perry. When there's never really been this strong alignment between themselves and Jack Perry in previous history, at least within AEW. They weren't friends. They weren't aligned. Now, if you go back to WWE, Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were all friends. They had a history. They worked in the ring. They all had friendship. And Kevin Nash was working side by side with Shawn Michaels at one point. There's a history there. We understood the history. Why was it okay here? Because we knew what it was about. And we thought it was cool that they were calling out somebody else on the other show. The Young Bucks calling out the scapegoat, calling out Jack Perry. After a CM Punk interview where he pretty much told us what went down from, you know, his perspective, right or wrong, whether you agree or don't disagree, this was what he felt, this is what he saw, and it seems to be more factual than lies. And so them coming out and calling Jack Perry is another dig and another shot across the ball at CM Punk because they had never done it before. If they would have done this out of the blue, they would have probably been a little better okay. They're like, oh, they're mentioning Jack Perry. He's, yeah, yeah. Suddenly doing it after Punk's interview is just another shot across the bow at Punk by the Young Bucks. Just the Young Bucks are jealous of what CM Punk draws because they cannot draw the numbers of CM Punk. And Cody, I, if Cody Rhodes sees this, I'm sorry. They may have been big in Japan, and you, these may be your friends, and I, I totally respect that. But at the end of the day, the Tampon Bucks, the Young Bucks, whatever, um, can't draw like Punk, and they know it. And they were jealous because they want to be the big guys in this company. They, they just don't want to be EVPs. They want to be recognized as everything. Now, I don't feel Kenny Omega is a big part of this. I think Kenny Omega is maybe the more neutral uh, party in this. And I think Kenny Omega may have been willing to do the business that needed to be done and wor would have worked with CM Punk. But it's allegiance to the Young Bucks, their friendship. I think I understand some of that. Unfortunately, I think he got stuck in the middle of it. And unfortunately, it seems like Cody kind of is stuck in the middle of a little bit because he's buddies with Punk. His buddy's hard. I mean, he's best friends with the Young Bucks, so we get it. But, I mean, to sit here and say, oh, it was okay for uh, Kevin Nash to call out HBK on Nitro, but the Young Bucks can't call because it's different. There's different meaning behind the idea of why they're doing it. It's so stupid. People are so angry over what CM Punk said, creating this anti-AEW wave when it doesn't need to be that way. It's it, It's... It's the people, it's the fans that are taking this and it's fanning it out to be in anything because there's got to be this side. Nobody can just enjoy wrestling. You've either got to be WWE or you got to be AEW. You can't be both. You can't be in the middle. You either hate one or don't like one or, or, and love one. And, it, and the fact of the matter is I want to love AEW. I want AEW to exist. I want AEW to achieve um, the, the success that they can. Two companies are better than one. Bottom line. Here's more people that want to comment. Bill at a GCW event of any kind cracks me up. Should tell Gage to stop, uh, Nick Gage to stop using real glass. Really? Man was talking about AEW being too indie, proceeds to watch an attendant extremely unconventional indie show. GCW is an indie fed, period. But what they do on an indie fed is a little different. When you are a national televised federation, when you are a company that's trying to be global to step away from the indie scene, yes, AEW is going to be indie. It's going to be considered indie just with a big TV production. If that's what they shoot for more than what they want to be. So we're going to crap on Phil Brooks for going to GCW, which is an indie fed, after he makes a comment about AEW being too indie. He didn't say he didn't like AEW. Because it was indie. He said AEW is presenting itself as something that it's not when it's just an indie fed. That's the thing. And that's exactly what I'll say. AEW wants to be competition for WWE. Tony Khan tries to sell it 
like they are a global company, like they're this big production company, that they're on the level of WWE, but they're not. They are indie fed with a big TV production value, period. People are crazy. It just the, the, the heat and the anger. And here we are going to WrestleMania 40, one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time. Should be a banger of a show. And we're worried about anti-AEW quotes and ridiculousness. It's a damn shame. Damn shame. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I ranted and screamed and yelled and everything else here today. I don't know what to say. You know, we need to end. The, it, it, what made the Monday Night War was great. It's, yeah, you had WWE fans. You had WCW fans. And you banter back and forth. But everybody liked it because it was getting better. And it pushed both sides to get better. Of course, people are hating on Triple H today. If they're not here, uh, he came out and said, if they're not here to be all in on this, like when I see people that come out trying to make it and then they pick a job where they, well, they work less, a schedule is lighter, then I'm like, all right, I'm glad I didn't get you. If you're not here for the grind at that point, that early in your career, you have no business being. People are throwing flack at Triple H about it. It's ridiculousness and it's sad ridiculousness. And um, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know. You know? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the big time. This has been a big time rant. I thank you for being here. I thank you for joining me. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, me and Mr. Clark will be here tonight for your uh, SmackDown Friday Night SmackDown review show. I don't know when that's going to be on because we've got to watch SmackDown. And, of course, the Hall of Fame is going to be on. So a lot of stuff going on tonight, and then we're going to be back here a Saturday night with your Royal Rumble day, or not Royal Rumble, your WrestleMania 40 night one review show, and then Sunday. Of course, there's no weekly roundup this week. We had one on Wednesday as a special edition, and so Wednesday or a Sunday night will be your um, night two pre-show uh, re show review, and then we got Raw, and then a whole bunch of other shows that are coming out. So join us tonight for SmackDown. We're going to be more clear and get everything ready. It's going to get hot. Tomorrow is WrestleMania. Let's get excited. Let's talk about WrestleMania. Come back tonight when we talk about SmackDown. We'll see you on that one for sure.